Hey folks, welcome to the program and to what I like to call Monday. Uh, and it's Miracle Monday because it's a miracle we were finally able to get our schedules aligned with our dear friend, Sean Foyt. Sean, welcome back to this program. I like your hat. <laughs> Thanks. Good to be here. It says, make holiness great again. Yeah. Awesome message. You... Um, you know, people often say to me that, Eric, I don't know how you do it. You travel, you travel, you're everywhere. I, I, I'm doing nothing compared to you. Uh, you're you're significantly younger than I am, but you're bouncing around. You've got a family. It's a, In fact, I think you've got several families. You've got a few in, in different states <laughs> and stuff. But you honestly, uh, you travel basically nonstop. So a lot has been happening with you. And I want to talk about any of it that you have time to talk about because you – you're dealing with what we Christians call spiritual warfare and it's real. It's not mm -hmm. something we've invented, but yeah. talk about some of the stuff you've been seeing lately. Cause it's unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, I, well, it's funny cause I just got an email actually just now from our um, production guy, one of our production guys that does all of our, our, you know, helping us with our sound and our lights and all of our stuff for venues. And <laughs> Antifa has been, using these hidden emails to to attack his servers to get all the information on what we spend on all of our events this is like a normal day right and so his team tracked back the emails and they 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 track back to a psychic a psychic and 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 uh uh, uh wiccan facility in portland oregon so Anyway, I, I share that with you because it's true. We are in living in a spiritual war. And, you know, yesterday I went on uh, live news to talk about this Knoxbury Farm issue and how this place uh, that's an amusement park that my kids have gone to here in Southern California for Halloween this year. They're doing a demonic bondage strip show uh, with, I mean, it's pornographic. It's insane. It's they're letting all ages into it. And this is the same location that hosted a love song from the Jesus People movement back in the 70s and 80s. It's a location that hosted revivals. And now well, it's been. Be, let's be clear Knoxbury Farms. Now, when I hear that, I kind of think, oh, that's kind of Americana. Yeah. Telling me, and again, I, you know, I say this on this program and everywhere I go, folks, you need to wake up to where we are. This is yeah. literally satanic. Yeah. Knoxbury farms is doing something openly evil as as yeah. openly evil as you can imagine it would be it would, yeah. it's like the fever dream of somebody from from 30 years ago like this is going to happen in the satanic future and you'd say like yeah you're nuts but sean you're telling me that they're doing this knoxbury farms is it, why would they do something as openly sick it's so sick it's it's all it's almost unbelievable yeah, I mean, it's it's the full-on assault on the next generation. I mean, the enemy always always picks the most vulnerable. You know, he always attacks the, 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 the weakest, and that's our kids. And, of course, you know, I'm passionate about this because i got four kids, ages 13, 11, 9, and 5. I just finished a book uh, uh, on boldness for teens and preteens. Like, it's it would, it would basically be my, my field manual to my own kids for – how to how to grow up in this atmosphere and culture but i think what we're seeing and I, you know the acceleration of the the elections the political climate the uh the the sexual perversion on overload the demonic i mean this this what's happening in knoxbury farm makes the sam smith grammy show look like a uh, child's play i mean it is so absolutely grotesque and disgusting and yet it's happening right down the road like from where i live and so Anyway, just referencing the spiritual war climate, it's true. It's what we're living in right now. Uh, we have to open our eyes. We have to uh, put on the full armor of God. You know, we have to literally return back to the reality that we're facing this every day. And it's only going to increase as we approach uh, next year and in, in the general election. I mean, it's 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 insane. Now, say, say again, Knoxbury Farms, this is just one location in Southern California. Mm -hmm. But I've heard yeah. of Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's, it's whether it's Target, you know, with the chest binders and the stuff they're putting in front of the store, whether it's Disney, 
with the, the wokeness uh, and, the, and the, the, the purposeful, intentional. I mean, these people are so sick. It's like, it's so purposeful. It's so uh, in, in, intentional. They want to get into the minds of kids and destroy them. And uh, Knoxbury Farm, just, I, I don't know if they're just not that smart or they don't care. They're just doing something so outrageous. I mean, it, <laughs> Disney would never even do anything this crazy. Um, but it is the time for us as the people of God and, and the people that love our nation to rise up and say, hey, we're not going to stand for this anymore. Uh, we're drawing a line. It's over. I mean, we've got to tell the world. I mean, first of all, I, I yeah. say this, I go, if, if you ever shop in a Target, don't talk to me. That place needs to be shut down. What they did la last year or this year, it is so evil that mm -hmm. you need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that's where these corporations are. They despise yeah. you and your values and the God you worship. They would have to, to be this open about yeah. doing what they did. So that's Target. We've covered Anheuser-Busch. The other day, uh, I, I was going to uh, order a beer. Stella Artois was the one that I would have picked, except they're owned by Anheuser-Busch. I will never, ever again order a product, that, not just Bud Light, uh, yeah. these products, because the company, Anheuser-Busch, they told you what they think about you, and you need to push back. We know the same is true of Disney. There are people that are still acting like Disney's the Disney that I grew up with. N no, it's not, folks. They yeah. have gone to the dark side they've done this very very overtly uh mm -hmm. we know about the la dodgers but now we're hearing about knoxbury farms you know sean i think the question is whether christians have the will to push back or if they are <laughs> i don't know what it is it's like spiritual inertia it's like a demonic yeah. uh trance that you just you don't care you just kind of keep you keep going your eyes are glazed over you don't you don't you don't do anything about this and they're coming for our children. And again, yeah. that sounds like a cliche. But I mean, what you just described, say again, what Knox Spray Farms is doing. I mean, every church in the in in, in Southern California ought yeah. to be about this. T tell this again. Yeah, it's it's I mean, they're basically they're doing a, a Knox. It's called not scary Halloween. And it's just this sexual demonic bondage LGBTQ strip show. Uh, it's absolutely horrific. Um, I talked about it live on, on TV yesterday and they were showing the images. I can't, I don't even want to post the images of what was shown, but I mean, if you do some digging, you can find it. It's insane. And so they're saying they recommend an audience 13 or older, but they're letting kids go into this thing. And, can, can you know, you, 13 year old looking at this, it's a 14 year old, a 15 year old. Can you imagine yeah. what this is? This is as, as dark yeah. as it gets. I mean, it's surprising, Sean, because We've not in our lifetimes seen the openly demonic. In other words, we know that the dark yeah. forces behind all the evil, that it is demonic. But when you see yeah. things openly demonic, when you see Target hire a designer um, who is putting Satan on some of this transgender clothing stuff that he's designing, you think, Satan? Really? Yeah, really. Yeah. Like, this is what's yeah. happening. But but the worst part is that churches aren't awake to this. That that's what kind of stuns me, uh, frankly, is that churches don't seem to be um, uh, aware of this, um, folks. Before we go to our first break, I want to remind you: this month um, we're doing a, a fundraiser for the Alliance Defending Freedom. These guys are heroes in the battle for religious liberty. If you go to our website, metaxastalk.com, you'll see the banner metaxastalk.com. We're asking you to be generous in supporting the Alliance Defending Freedom. These are the heroes, folks. They are on the front lines defending your religious liberty. You need to understand who they are, what they do, and you need to help them. Go to metaxastalk.com, click on the banner. Be right back with Sean Foyt. Folks, welcome back. We're talking to our friend Sean Foyt. Let me spell that. S-E-A-N. F. E-U-C-H-T, not making it up, F-E-U-C-H-T, Foyt, Sean Foyt. Sean, uh, you are, you're doing a lot. Let's talk about where you've been and, and how can people find you on social media? Is Let Us Worship uh, the best place? 
Yeah, of course, they can go to at Sean Foyd on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, of course, we're getting censored and shadow banned like crazy right now. Uh, but then go to lettuceworship.us and go to seanfoyt.com. Or here's a better idea. You can text uh, the word Sean, S-E-A-N, to 2022-1. Again, that's Sean, S-E-A-N, 2022-1. You can text it. Get connected with what we're doing. We've done 27 capitals uh so far this year and we're finishing our king of the capital tour 23 next year um but i wanted to say this eric you know we were talking about knott's Berry farm we're talking about this this unveiling of the demonic we're talking about the lethargy and the apathy of the church and i was thinking you know you know uh, part of the david and goliath story that i think is so applicable right now um is is one of course we have giants roaming the land just like you know, in David's day, we have Goliaths that are mocking uh, the armies of the living God. But the, the unique thing about David is he did not succumb to the cultural, uh, uh, the cultural vibe around him, which just came into agreement with Goliath's going to be here. Let's just manage him. Let's keep him in the corner over here and everything will be fine. David was rose up in a unique calling to say, no, 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 giants are meant to fall. And he wasn't buying in to the church lingo of his day to just manage the giant. And I really feel like that's what God's calling us to move into. Like we, we got to realize, we got to wake up when we see things like Target or Knott's Berry Farm or these, these different things flare their head. We got to say, hey, listen, that's a giant. That's a Goliath that needs to come down. And it may be annoying to people, like people may be watching the show. Being, Why are these guys always fired up? Uh, and it was annoying to people in David's day. They said, David, what are you doing here? You're, all, it's, you're always making it about yourself. You're always arrogant, blah, blah, blah. They didn't understand that David had an anointing to slay the giant, the one that they came into agreement with managing. So I, I just feel like that's a word for the season that we live in. I want to tell you that is the Holy Spirit, because that is precisely what I am hearing, so to speak, I'm not hearing, uh, I'm not getting a Rima word of knowledge, but this is, uh, I'm writing about it in my new book right now. This is exactly where the dead church is. This is where dead religion is. And this is where, um, you know, the, the dead Republican party has been. When you say we're going to make peace with evil, we don't want to fight evil. We don't want to win yeah. against evil. We just want to coexist with evil. If you are willing to coexist with evil, whether it is Goliath cursing the living God, if you're willing to coexist with that, you are complicit in that. God calls us in his strength to go up against evil. And so in the last uh, chapter of my book, Letter to the American Church, I talk about Ronald Reagan saying, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall, because he understood we need to try to win against the evil empire of the Soviet Union. This is evil. The, the Gulag Archipelago, they're torturing uh, and enslaving millions of people. We need, as, as America, as, as a country founded by Christians and Christian principles and liberty, and we need to stand against this. And the deep state of his time, the moderates in the Republican Party said, oh, Mr. President, you're, that's not presidential. That's kind of, we have detente. We've, we've made peace with the Soviet Union. And he's thinking... Well, you mean you don't even want to win if you might win? If you could fight and win, you don't want to fight? And that is exactly what you are talking about, Sean. And that is the Holy Spirit speaking to his people right now. God is calling us to get out of the shadows, out of our little religious yeah. corners, and to take the battle to the enemy for the sake of these children whose lives right. are being destroyed for the sake of the innocent people around this country who are just trying to keep it together and dealing with all of this evil. So I, I, I thank you for, for being that kind of a warrior. And you are, and you have been all, all around the country. Thanks, Eric. Yeah. I, I, um, I feel like, you know, I, I was thinking about this yesterday about how, like, what's the point of the, the platform and the influence and the position and, it's like the, the purpose is for these kind of moments. And I think that part of, part of what's difficult in this influencer, uh, you know, I'm in the music realm, you know, so this, this influencer, we're cool Christian musicians and, and we're trying to fill stadiums so people can sing our songs. And it's like we've, we've almost prostituted this calling 
uh, to be the Davids because we don't want to call out the Goliaths. You know, we don't want to utilize our influence and our platforms in order to call evil out. And there's a lot of evil to call out right now across America. And because of it, a whole generation is growing up in bondage because we're not uh, we're not using our voices. This is what happened in COVID. This is why I think, you know, uh, t- tomorrow is such a big deal for us. It's, it's the one year anniversary of uh, the super spreader film that, that released in theaters across America, which you were a part of. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, top five movie in America when it came out. Why was that such a big deal? Because no one was talking about it. It was the first first ever film that was released in theaters worldwide that shared the story of COVID, but it shared it from God's perspective. You know, it shared it from a remnant group of people. Like when, when we were together marching through the Bronx, you know, and we were worshiping and, and we were seeing God touch people and unity was coming to cities that were destroyed. Like this is our calling. This is why God has given us these abilities, these gifts, these platforms and I just feel like it's it's time now. It's like we're here. God's positioned us. Like we got to burn it down. Like it's all it's revival or nothing. And we cannot play along with the industries and the algorithms and the the, the uh, monetization schemes that cause us to just back off. Like we just got to break through all that. Well, so. listen, man, I totally agree. Let me ask you first of all, where can people see Super Spreader now? Because it, it it is really really inspiring and i want everyone to see it how can they see super spread of the film right they, now yeah they could go to i mean it's on amazon prime if you said super spreader um it's also on superspreaderfilm.com if you don't want to go through amazon i don't blame you go okay. to superspreaderfilm.com and you can you can it's on demand you can download it watch it superspreaderfilm.com yeah Okay, and I'm go- but I'm also glad it's on Amazon Prime for people who are there. But it, yeah. it's inspiring, and and what you're talking about, Sean, it, it's encouraging. You you have been one of the few people that has been an encouragement to me personally because a lot of people are playing it a little safe. Uh, and and I thought, you know, I used to be one of those people, but things have gotten so bad that if you don't speak, yeah. you're guilty. And and that's why I want to warn people, folks, you do not want to be counted guilty you you want to be one of the ones helping and fighting doing your part and you know what what you refer to sean about the the people i mean there are these books that come out right now they they get sent to our studio in new york right like you know de-churching or like why people aren't going to church and and how we can fix it and what we need to do and i just laugh i think if you're talking about what people care about if you're talking about the things that Sean Foyt is talking about, people will come to your church. If you're somebody like a Jack Hibbs or a Rob McCoy uh, or, or, or a Greg Locke or a down, down, down the line, there are churches around the country where they're actually talking about this every Sunday, where they are arming their people to, to fight for their children's sake in the culture. And uh, by the way, there's a website called mychurchfinder.org. We've had Neil Mammon on talking about it. If you want to find a good church, tell your pastor to sign up. It's mychurchfinder.org. This is an amazing tool, mychurchfinder.org. But if you're not going to a church that is talking about this stuff, my attitude would be like, why go to church? Why go to church that is pretending like, well, it's 1985. We don't believe in the gifts of the spirit. We don't believe God is alive. We just think it's a nice place to go on Sunday morning before brunch, effectively. That seems to be... What, what a lot of people think of as church. And I'm here to tell you, sorry, folks, that's not the church. That's the devil's church. I'm sorry to, to tell you the bad news, but that kind of dead religiosity, that is perfect. The devil says, you know what? Go to a church like that because the Germans who went to those churches in the 1930s enabled me to use the Nazi party to unleash satanic evil and to murder millions. That's where we are right now. Yeah, no, it is. And, and I think that, I think that people need to be clued. And I'm actually grateful for uh, when the enemy overplays his hand and it becomes so obvious, like the Knott's Berry Farm thing or, or other situations. It becomes so blatantly obvious that there's no, uh, you know, there's no ambiguity. Uh, there's no, uh, you know, it's just literally evil right in your face. It's happened in education across America. I mean, it's just, 
there's a great exposing that's happening right now. And I think that that's going to help people begin to wake up. And the other thing is, you know, I, for 20 years, I, I was, uh, you know, doing missions in the most persecuted nations in the world. Hang on, we're going to a break. Uh, I, I want, this is very important, folks. Don't go away. We're talking to Sean Foyt. Talking to Sean Foyt. Sean, you were just sharing how you were doing global missions. I mean, you were traveling around the world. Talk about that to prepare you for what you're facing in America today. Yeah, I'm, uh, I, uh, so for 20 years, you know, I, I was in the most persecuted nations in the world. My parents were both full time medical missionaries. So I grew up on the mission field and, and, you know, when I was a teenager, I, I used to read through the, vo uh, the book, uh, Voice of the Martyrs book, you know, the D DC Talk Jesus Freak book. I loved it. And I was just enthralled with these stories of these people that gave their life for the gospel. And it caused me to, and this is what I, I, I write about in my books, to put, f you know, the five most persecuted closed nations in the world. I was like, I want to go there. I don't want to preach the gospel. Well, today I've been to four out of the five, you know, and, and on that list, you know, is North Korea, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Iran. Um, and what I discovered with the persecuted churches, they have developed these muscles, right? To where they're, they, and, and this is what we need in America. This is what we're moving to, right? Uh, I mean, we see the FBI raid pro-life centers. We see people getting censored and banned and persecuted. I was just in Canada where pastors were drug off to prison for hosting church services during COVID. We're starting to see this wave of persecution in different ways. And what it causes us to do is build these muscles of faith and resistance. And I think that People have like COVID was a wake up call because we've never been told in America before you can have church. We've never been told you can't worship. We've never been told you can't sing. But these other nations, this is all they know. Like when they follow Jesus, they're giving up their life. They know that they're going to be breaking the law. They know that they're going to be getting in trouble. It's like the book of Acts. The whole book of Acts is a vacillation of getting in trouble, getting thrown in prison, God giving delivering them and then them praying to get more boldness to get in more trouble and we're in america we're starting to build these muscles that we're gonna need in the coming season because it's just getting crazier that i mean that is so beautifully put and it's exactly correct we've been drifting along and it's, it's what you know when you don't exercise your muscles they atrophy and that's basically the story of the american church it was the story of the german yeah. which yeah led to their failure in the 30s to stand against the satanic evil of the Nazis. They were not prepared. They were not right. they were not uh, willing to go there. And that is the question now is, is God raising up a holy remnant now? I believe mm -hmm. he is, but yeah. I believe he's not there yet, uh, that there are many, many, many people even listening to this program that they're still playing church. They're going to a church that refuses to wake up to what you are saying to what I am yeah. saying, they act mm -hmm. like, well, that's that's your reality. It's like, folks, no, it's not our reality. You you want it to just be our reality, but the fact is, it is reality. And if you don't wake up to it, you are complicit with yeah. this thing. I don't know how bad it has to get. I keep saying it's Romans eight twenty eight. Uh, all things work together for good. The, the the evilness of evil coming out so openly is helping some people finally to wake up and saying, I I had. Right. No that it was this bad. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know, I, I, I feel like, and, and we're, it's mo we're moving also into a season where it's like, you know, we don't have political solutions. We don't have economic solutions. It's like God in his kindness and mercy is leaving us no other options. Like we have to have a revival. We have to have an awakening. Like what the church has to arise. Like it's, it's this or the nation's gone. I mean, I feel Eric, such an urgency, like more of an urgency now than I've ever felt in my entire life. Like we have to have a move of God. And just like in the first and second great awakenings and the Jesus people movement and Azusa street and the ones that have happened throughout American history, uh, they shift, they shift the, the future of our nation. And if we're going to see God continue to uh, write a beautiful story over America, we got to have him intervene in our country. And so that's You're why not, a lot of times people go like, yeah, yeah, hey, folks, this is true. I, I'm warning you 
what Sean just said is true. Either we see a move of God or it is genuinely over. This is not, you know, uh, th- this is not the boy who cried wolf like, ah, you know, you've been saying that. No, no, this yeah. is real. This is where we are. And if you open your eyes, you will see that this is where we are, that that Sean is not exaggerating. I'm not exaggerating. This is where we are. We are that desperate. We're pushed against the Red Sea. If the Lord doesn't move, it's over. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, I think that we have to, like, it's not enough to just stand against woke ideologies. It's not enough to do boycotts. It's not enough to just rise up in conservatism, which is kind of a joke in, in a lot of ways. Uh, as we've seen, like we, we literally have to have the fire of God. Like that, that is, it, it's, it's beyond a political ideology or, or a, you know, just watching these, you know, these, these candidates <laughs> for, you know, and last night in the debate and I was, it's just like, are you kidding me? Like nobody has any solutions. Like it's so ridiculous. And 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 it and it gives this awesome opportunity for us in humility to go. God, you're our only hope. Okay, going to a break. We've got uh, one more segment with Sean Foyt. Folks, do not go away. Go to superspreaderfilm.com. Superspreaderfilm.com. Folks, welcome back. I'm talking to Sean Foyt. Um, Sean, you referred uh, last week. There was the uh, the Republican quote unquote debate. I I was on the day after to mock it because I thought to myself, first of all, I didn't watch it because I I tuned in to a couple of parts of it. And I thought to myself, wow, these guys could not be more out of touch. Now, you know, maybe uh, Ron DeSantis uh, is the only one that doesn't really fall into that category, but I still felt like they don't understand. It, It would be like, People coming to murder and rape your family, and you say, you know what? Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna just check on the stew uh, because we're having dinner. You, do, do you understand where we are? The nation is being taken over. We have strangers, many of them, I'm sure, hostile, crossing our borders. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have fentanyl pouring into the country. We have sex trafficking, raping of children. I mean, that's just the beginning of the list of the, there's no other word for it. Evil being unleashed in America. My hope, and I think your hope is that the Lord will use this to wake people up to say, how bad does it have to get before you're willing to say, this is evil. I need to do something about it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of times, unfortunately, biblically, you see that misery and, 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 and darkness and horror is the thing that, that causes people to turn. Um, I think when I look at the current political climate um, as one that's been engaged in that for years, I just feel like, man, like none of these people really have solutions. And I am starting to see like, as we go city to city, you know, we've been to 27 capitals this year. 27 u.s capitals i've stood on the steps of 27 u.s capitals i've taken communion i've done altar calls i've seen people give their life to jesus i've seen drugs the last capitals we were at we had a pile of drugs you talk about drugs america is overdosing on levels we've never seen i mean the drugs that are coming in from the southern border the 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 stupid laws that we have that enable this kids are committing suicide um People don't really understand unless you're out there how bad it is. Like there's no way to even for me to even on your show, Eric, articulate how devastating it is. And yet in the midst of all this, when you call on God, he's near, he comes and he breaks in. And so we're just at an hour in America where, where, where we, we need a move of God. And, you know, I, I, it's going to be very, very interesting to see, you know, uh, as this begins to unfold in the coming months, uh, what happens, what the church does, what God, who God uses, who he raises up. And I know we witnessed in 2020, uh, this is what makes me excited about 24 and 2020 uh, leading up to that election and the COVID pandemic, we saw more hunger in America than I've ever seen in my entire life. In the darkest day, uh, we saw such an urgency for God to move. And so I'm really praying and believing that 24 is going to be a year marked for revival. Revival always 
rises in seasons of catastrophe and 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 hopelessness it always seems like god has a counter movement and so anyway that's what gets me excited about next year and even this fall well so if people want to find out your schedule where they can go to your events uh what's the best website let us worship they can go to lettuceworship.us. They can go to seanfoyt.com. They can text the word Sean, S E A N, to 2021 if they just get their phone and they text, text. Sean to 2021. To what? Sean to 2021. 2021. Yep. 2021. Okay. Um, and the super spreader film, they can go to super spreader film. No. Dot com. Let us worship dot us. Uh, if people want to follow you, uh, I hope people will see the super spreader film if they have not. Uh, and I hope people will, um, will, will find you because you're all over the country. Uh, where are you going to be in the next couple of weeks, for example? Well, we have, uh, our big, we have one of our last events of the year, uh, in, uh, Fort Worth, Texas. That's happening um, middle of next month, and then we're we're culminating uh, 2022 um, in Phoenix, Arizona. What'd you say? You know when exactly your event is in Fort Worth? Uh, I believe it's October 28th, okay, and then and then, right. and then in Phoenix, Arizona, on December 31st, we're going to be at Dream City Church, and it's just going to be wild. Across Arizona is a very uh, important state, uh, spiritually and, and, and politically and a lot of stuff. So we really felt like God called us there to have the greatest New Year's Eve party the world's ever seen. Eric, you'll probably already be asleep on New Year's Eve, but hope so. you want to come. <laughs> I might be lying in a shallow grave at that point, but whatever, whatever God has. <laughs> So yeah, we're going to be kicking off uh, 2024 in in Phoenix, and then of course next year we're rolling out 23 cities. And it was it's I really felt like God gave us the strategy that these 23 cities. I mean, it's going to be wild, Eric. We're finishing, we're culminating this whole thing on the National Mall in Washington D.C. ten days before the general election. We're going to be on the National Mall. It's going to be the largest worship service in america in 2024 will be on the national mall i, I have a funny feeling i'm going to be there uh, whether i like it or not and <laughs> I, yeah, I am i'm so excited for everything you're doing sean we'll, we'll let you go but god bless you my friend thank you god bless you love you man thanks, thanks.